made this, uh, I call it mahogany. Hello everybody, it's Jimmy. A couple of videos ago, um, I shared how I made this, uh, I call it mahogany bowl here. Uh, it's got some dowel inserts in it. And uh, I was bemoaning the fact that I had a lot of tear out with this. Well, I was very lucky because one of the viewers of that video is none other than Jack Shelton, who is a past president of the Treasure Coast Woodturners Guild. And he invited uh, me to come to his shop uh, so that he could show me some of the techniques for bowl turning. So in this video, uh, Jack's gonna demonstrate some of the basic tool moves uh, for spindle turning uh, in the beginning and then in the last part of it we're going to rough out uh, this little ball, actually I say we, Jack's going to demonstrate a uh, good technique for roughing out a ball. But basically we'll make one pass. I wasn't straight on with this thing straight up and down like this. I angled it and I tipped it a little bit. You kind of point it in the direction you want to go. Exactly. Is the way I've the heard flute, it said. The flute sort of goes where you're where you're pushing. Now that moves a lot of material quickly. Yes, because it's a very big gully. Like that, but you look down in there and you will see the tear out that comes from just straight away cutting. Right. Okay. So you're going directly across the grain instead of exactly, shearing. and you want to shear everything if you can possibly do it. Right. Okay. So we'll take this and make it real smooth with just one little fine cut. And you got that nice stream coming off of there. And you see what's happening there. And just way over here on the side, ride that bevel until you start getting the cut. Okay? And then you're going to bring that tool handle back around until you see a little dust start. I can use this for 99% of everything that we do. That's a bowl gouge, That's right? That's a bowl gouge. Okay. okay? And, and when, I was gonna, size on it. when I was going to rough this thing, I would put it like so. Okay? This is a pull cut. This is a push cut. You said you do about 90% of your work with that little guy right there. 99. Use a bull gouge. Push cut. off the end of a piece of wood like we're going to do right now all right okay this is fairly hard wood and we mm -hmm. don't have a problem but you can get tear out right but there's the where there. your tear out there will happen yep, yep. okay I and that's that. because you're going off into air you get it's uns the it's if, unsupported wood right if you come back oh yeah that's, that's nice. it okay that's nice that's oh, like yeah. That's the 320 grit sanding that you go to on that, right? right? Yeah, uphill. Right. Always You'll cut down into, and as soon as you get over here towards that, it's going to get that and turn. It's going to try to cut. It's okay. going to give you a tear. So, and you go over here, and as soon as you get down to the, the middle, and you start up Bob. the other side, eek, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. So you cut towards the middle, and push it down in, and we're going to start. See me start to scoop it out. You roll it out. Yeah. Yeah, and you come over here, and you're going to come down right into the valley. Okay. Notice how that bevel is riding right it on is. that it's, thing here. It's riding and, and I can tell by looking you're getting a nice smooth cut. This thing is so smooth, it's better than oh, you can yeah. do with sandpaper. Yeah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Put your finger over that's there, feel it. Yeah, put, feel it. check that, that is like... no sand. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. See the light reflecting off of it. it yeah, that, and, and that's from using your bevel. So those are the very important things that you do with the, this tool. You can also do it with You notice where we're cutting with this? Right on the tip. Very bottom, 32nd of an inch is all that's going to ever touch the wood. Uh, and the, you can feel that, you see? That's dead smooth. Okay. Well, I can see from here that okay. it's shiny. That's now, a good clue. What and I'm going to keep that big cutting edge away from 
from there. As soon as I laid it over a little bit, that thing would eat that thing because it's unsupported. It's not where it's cutting. So the advantage of this particular tool, and I haven't used it yet, so you guys are first, but we'll come up here. Oh, you're just going right into it with the point there. Yeah. But look how, how I got so much laid over onto, I'm not worried about it, about it catching. Check that out. Okay. It seems to really work pretty cool. And you went sharp point, you, you went both angles with well, that. Well, some of the rules that you, that you go with, with skews is, if you're going towards the tail stock, you use the bottom, the tail of your, of your skew, like so. Yeah, you just you just go right in there. You just take that point right in there. Yeah, well that's what that's what. I guess for. I guess if that's if you're pointing the tool that way and it's supported, the bevel you're going to be okay the bevel with is that. Supported. You're across the vein. I'm always trying to. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm always shooting to get. You know, is that planing well, action because you're doing it like this. Cut to it. You've and you're doing it. You're doing a scrape. Okay. Now, if you're going that way, I'm I can easily see. Oh, you what, you're where going. it's cutting. Right. Okay? Right. Right. But if I bring it over here. I'm down here looking where it's cutting. Turn it over. Look at that. I, okay. haven't, I have not seen that before. It just like went right into it with the point there. Uh. Wow. And you push in. And then you'll start in the middle of it and you'll go over. And you'll start in the middle of it. You, just, you don't care which tip you're using. I think that's amazing. Well, did you see that I, I could see what I'm doing here and I could see what I'm doing yes, here? Yes. But I didn't use that over there. I'd be way over here trying to see what's happening. So it's all so, about it's all about posture and what you what you can control. Tail. Tail, bottom, tail piece of your of this. Top, head, going towards the headstock. That's all you gotta remember. And okay. it's not it's not a hard fast rule, that but it, it, it works, okay? So we'll, we'll come in here, we gotta have to have a little bit more room. And we'll continue to make this bead. And what I love is it's so clean. Okay. And it's such a very nice cut. Oh, that's a beauty there. And you know. So you can make this bead any way you want with this. And for your finials that you were making, yeah. A traditional finial has what they call an onion shape, slicing cutting edge into your work, which gives you that super smooth, nice cut. So you peel off the work. When you're turning finials, you you definitely don't want to get rid of all this meat back here. You want to do this little tippy end first, and work, your, work way your way back, because if you start doing something back here, this is going to fall off. Dang, look how little that is. I heard that. That's almost spooky. <laughs> well, it'll come off, but it also will will uh, get that harmonic bounce out here because it's got nothing supporting it. Uh, the yeah. same thing for tail prevails when you're doing bowls. If you start cutting the guts out of your piece early, and you've almost got to cut it clean. Try to sand that little thing. Right here, that'll come off yeah. in your hand and you'll yeah. you you lose up. your definition. Look like a toothpick when you're done. Yeah. yeah. And there it's just a Okay, what I've done is provided myself a place to do what? Put you're the right bevel. Start getting the bevel. I got the bevel on there. And I want to face this off out here. So what do I do? I raise my tool handle until I get a cut going. I advance the tool and I and I roll with my body and I take off those bumps. If I'm out here, those bumps are hitting me big time. Going, yeah. bam, 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 bam. You are taking one heck of a cut on I can that. take a half inch. That's taking like a you know four thousand per pass. It's taking me like an hour. But do you notice that all that banging that you got out here? It ain't oh, there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I'm riding the bevel. Yes, you are. And I'm going along here. You're doing a nice purdy. And cut. this is not a good cut. This is just moving wood cut. But I'm not getting beat up. Not so you much. get to this point. Kind of scallop it almost. 
you just take off a, a, a bite at a time. So you're going from unsupported to supported. Right. Okay, now. Okay, one shape all the way around. Got some humps and bumps, but we can take our tool and come around here and smooth all that out with a shear cut. And you almost roll the tool completely over onto the wood. You want to get it almost like this. If you get it too much like that, you're going to get a catch. hit this real quick because it's got some fairly wet glue in there so the, the stuff I smush in there is going to stick. It's kind of hogging you don't want to you don't want to just keep working on this hole. Right. You want to come out here and bring this down as you bring the rest of the bowl. Because what happens is if you cut all this middle out and then you start trying to do it out here, especially on a solid piece. This is glued together. But on a solid piece, the guts come out of him and he starts to go, wow, I, I was held together by that. Now I don't have it, I'm going to move. Yeah, and so start getting some... The, the rule says that you make what you would think be the last cut on your piece first. Last cut first. What are you going to do? You're going to get this outside rim established? Gotcha. You're going to get everything established first and you ain't coming back there except for the piece of sandpaper. Because if you cut the guts out, you try coming back here, yes. it's going to happen. Done it. Okay. Ah, done it. Okay. Keep oh, the yeah. guts in here as long as you can. Right. Which is, is contrary to drilling a big ass hole in there with a Forster bit and then go into that hole. Right. You don't drill the hole all the way to the bottom like everybody thinks. You drill a hole about an inch. Take it. I'm pushing in just about as much as I'm pushing. Now I'm moving it across the wood. Okay, so I like to cut to that hole. What happens? And see what a nice pick. And now I hold this up here. And that's where I am. Okay. Okay? So I got myself another half inch to go. Sure. Uh, see that tool's got a positive break ground into it, so he's not completely. Oh, I negative. see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. So yeah, this is a cutting you. tool. Yes, it okay? is. Okay. So you can do and make it smooth across the bottom, and I got a hole. It's hard to sand. I have everything. to sand everything down to that hole. Whereas if I have a bump, it takes me about two seconds to sand the bump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Jack gave me as a homework assignment uh, the roughed out bowl to bring back and finish and uh, and I used some of his techniques and uh, it hadn't have been for kind of a crucial error here. You can see I had these dowels that I had drilled through lengthwise uh, through the blank and this is the effect I was looking for here, this kind of bow tie effect. Uh, but I ended up with one a little bit close to the center and I don't think we did a really good job of centering the piece to begin with. But nonetheless, uh, this one uh, didn't come out like the others. Still interesting though, and uh, still uh, very happy uh, with this. It's, uh, it'll uh, stay up on my shelf as a reminder of uh, good practice for bowl turning.